good evening everyone and welcome to another session of our sutta studies paying homage to the buddha so please join me reciting namo tassa three times namo tassa bhagavato arahato tamma sambuddhasya namo tassa bhagavato arahato namo tassa bhagavato arahato ओके सो Let us start our sutta class. As usual, we paid our homage to the Buddha, and uh, I have now shared the text of the sutta, which we are going to discuss today on uh, chat. So, if anybody wishes to have a copy of the text, the translation of the Pali text, you can download it. from your chat chat box today sutta is uh, from sangyukta nikaya and its uh, title given to it is the simile of the six animals and the pali name is called chappana kopama sutta or chappanaka sutta and this title is uh, made using uh, three pali words ch is the first one pana or panaka is the middle one and upama is the third one and then the sutta ch means six in pali it is a number ch means six pana or panaka means living creatures or living beings and ch panaka means six living beings i can speak Yes, the it's simile. Okay. So this is the huh? simile no, of the know, six really. living ah. beings. So six animals, particularly in this sutta, the creatures use yeah. are animals. So it is translated as the simile of the six animals. Which one? And before we go on to the text and it's reading like and discussion, can someone? Uh, confirm that you can hear me properly because i am using this new microphone given to me offered to me by one of our uh, i can hear who is joining okay. here yeah coming through clear what about lux ba- can you hear me okay yes bante we can hear you can you yes, hear can us yes you very clearly bante i we couldn't get what you said earlier would you mind repeating it there was disturbance so yeah, and yeah. Fun. Uh, Okay, now I can hear you. Earlier I couldn't because there was a different option selected. Now Wait. I can hear you. What else can you do? Ah, put under the low. Okay. I think you can hear me. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, Good. we can. Yeah. The, at the at the very beginning there was a disturbance because of the internet connection dropped. now i think it uh, it's uh, reconnected now it should be okay for the rest of the class can you hear me ante yeah okay good thank you can you hear me ante uh, yes we can hear you we can hear you and when we uh, uh, so we are going to start the sutta now and i will start with in the usual way with reading the text and in the middle of the class Uh, i will invite everyone to contribute and uh, present your questions and let's uh, start a discussion uh, so Monday, i couldn't i couldn't see yes. the uh, i couldn't see the document in the chat yet okay yeah let me put it again is it just me or 
did other people not see it either? Yeah, I, yeah, I no, just yeah. shared it with everyone. So I think everyone should yes, be able to I, see, I see it, it, download it Thank now. you. Okay. Yes, I see. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so this is Chappana Kopama Sutta, the Pali term, and the English translation of the topic is called the simile of the six animals. Uh, it is so called because in this sutta, Buddha has used a very nice, interesting simile again, because uh, you know, there are a number of suttas that Buddha uses uh, similes, very interesting one, very appropriate one uh, to the um, uh, particular teaching that he is teaching. So in this uh, sutta, he is using a simile of six uh, different animals to teach a very good lesson to a group of bhikkhus. Therefore, this sutta uh, is given the name Chappano Kopama Sutta or the uh, simile of the six animals. Let's go to the text first and then uh, we will start the discussion. And as I mentioned briefly, this is from the Sangyukta Nikaya, the connected discourses of the Buddha uh, in the Sutta Pitaka. And in Sangyukta Nikaya, this uh, Sangyukta Nikaya again uh, divided into a few sections or subgroups. Uh, this belongs to uh, the group called Salayatanavagga. And uh, in that Salayatanavagga, again, uh, this goes under Asivisavagga because the first of this section is. Asivisa Sutta, so it is called Asivisavagga. And uh, the Sutta is uh, 35 in Sangyutta Nikaya itself. <laughs> the simile of the six animals. Let's uh, read first. Because suppose a man with limbs wounded and festering would enter a wood of thorny reeds and the kusatons would prick his feet and the reed blades would slash his limbs. Thus that man would thereby experience even more pain and displeasure. So two bhikkhus, some bhikkhu here, go on to the village or the forest, meet okay. someone who reproaches there, him. Can I raise Thus. the question? Huh? Yeah. there. Now... Yeah. Bhante, I have a pro bit of a problem. My no, two of my friends talking. are trying to yeah. connect. Yeah. And they say that it is uh, with another, that you are with another meeting and they can't connect. Two of my friends. They have huh? the say ID and the password that I have sent. Yeah. Unfortunately, can they can't connect. connect because you are in another meeting, it says. So you don't know it. Ah, that's the, the, I, I, I guess that is not my problem because they must be connected to another thing. I guess. Let me let me share the uh, meeting details anyway. Uh -huh. uh, so that I will send, send it to them it. as well. Then, I see so you. Uh, it says you are with another meeting. That means they are connected to something else, I, I guess. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, but yeah? I will tell them. Ask them to disconnect everything and reconnect. Ah, uh, okay, if you thank can, you. Please. Thank you, Bhante. Yeah, anyway, I will uh, put the uh, meet in detail into the chat. So if you can uh, copy oh. it and send it to okay. anybody, they will be able to join. Thank, thank you, Bhante. Yeah, and Bhante. they don't need a password, only the link and the or link or the meeting ID. That's all they need. So I'm now putting it into the chat again. And also now everybody should be able to download the uh, copy of the uh, sutta. Uh, it is again in the chat box and I'm um, putting for the third time as well because some say they can't see it. So it should be available now. Okay, so this is how the sutta started. Buddha addressing a group of bhikkhus, Buddha says, uh, imagine or think that 
suppose that there's there's this man who's uh, who has uh, uh, his limbs wounded and festering and he enters into another wood which is thorny um and then these thorns and this um uh, uh uh reed blades can do more harm to this person uh, causing more pain more suffering more displeasure to this particular person so similarly buddha says if a monk uh, if a bhikkhu uh enters or lives in a village or a forest and if another one meets that bhikkhu and says or reproaches him say in this this venerable one this bhikkhu acting in such a way behaving in such a way is foul village thorn have you understood him thus as a thorn one should understand restraint and non restraint so similar to that person who is entering a wood having a uh, festering wood a wound uh, experiencing more and more uh, displeasure uh, suffering pain uh, due to the uh, thorns and reeds of that uh, wood forest similarly one can reproach a bhikkhu who is uh, living in a village or a forest who is not uh, restrained or who has no uh, restraint of uh, the six senses so that is how uh, the sutta begins the buddha uh, starts this uh, discourse and then buddha says and how because is there non restraint here having seen a form with the eye a bhikkhu is intent upon a pleasing form and repelled by a displeasing form he dwells without having set up mindful mindfulness of the body with a limited mind and he does not understand as it really is that liberation of mind liberation by wisdom we are in those evil unwholesome states cease without remained having heard a sound with the ear and goes on it goes on so having started the uh, discourse the sutta with this uh, simple example or simile of a man who is uh, having a festering wound uh, festering wound and then goes into a wood uh, and in the wood because of the reeds and thorns this person experiences more and more pain similarly a similar thing can happen to a bhikkhu in terms of his uh, restraint or his uh, discipline discipline of his uh, six sense bases if a bhikkhu is unable to discipline his six sense bases one can reproach that bhikkhu one can accuse or blame that bhikkhu saying that this bhikkhu is not uh, having uh, or he is not practicing or experience you know practicing the discipline or the restraint so buddha says there are two sides of it one is restraint the other one is non restraint and then he goes on to explain what does it mean uh, by non restraint what is non restraint how one Uh, can or how one does not practice restraint and buddha says uh, having seen a form with the eye a bhikkhu is uh, doing two things the the first thing is he is intent upon a pleasing form and also the other thing is he is repelled by this pleasing form so those are the two things a bhikkhu would do Uh, and thereby uh, practice non restraint or he is uh, fail or he is unable to practice the restraint that is to uh, create these two kinds of thoughts in mind when he sees a form the first one is uh, to have attachment or to have intent upon pleasing forms if the form if the thing that he sees with his eye is a pleasing one agreeable one likable one 
that person that bhikkhu would create or would arouse in his mind attachment or liking or clinging towards that form and if it is a displeasing one uh, disagreeable one unpleasant one something the person doesn't like to see he would be repelled or he would have an aversion thought of aversion in his mind he would arouse aversion uh, towards that displeasing form so thereby he would uh, not practice the restraint or in other words this is called the non restraint and the same thing happens when the person hears something with his um, ears and the same thing happens when some uh, when the bhikkhu uh, cognizes something with his mind and when uh, the bhikkhu tastes something with his tongue when he touches something with his body uh, when he smells something with his um, nose so if the thing whether he uh, sees or tastes or touches or cognizes or smells if it is a likable one agreeable one pleasing one he would create or he would generate arouse intent or if not um, likeness or uh, attachment or clinging towards this form and if it is displeasing one displeasing form displeasing sound displeasing um, taste displeasing smell and displeasing touch or displeasing um, mental thought mental phenomenon so he would create or generate aversion towards this thing so thereby he would not practice restraint or discipline of his six sense bases so that is how uh, the non restraint is and not only that he would also uh, not uh, set up mindfulness of the body and also uh, his mind will be limited and also he does not understand as it really is as they really are and also two types of liberations that is the liberation of mind and also liberation by wisdom and thereby unwholesome states uh, would not be ceased without remained so by doing that by not practicing the restraint he uh, is fail and also goes or continues his uh, journey in the sansara or his sansara will be prolonged and this is called uh, practice of non restraint or this is how non restraint is so this is how non restraint should be understood and having said that buddha then goes on to uh, present his uh, nice and interesting uh, simile the simile of this six animals and of course the first part of this simile there are two parts of this simile the first part is the simile for this above mentioned non restraint to show how non restraint using this uh, nice simile okay let's read the simile too and then we can uh, go for the discussion with the says suppose because a man would catch six animals with different domains and different feeding grounds and tie them by a stray uh, by a strong rope he would catch a snake a crocodile a bird a dog a jackal and a monkey six different animals and tie each by a strong rope having done so he would tie the ropes together with a knot in the middle and release them then those six animals with different domains and different feeding grounds would each pull in the direction of its own feeding ground and domain the snake would pull 
one way thinking let me enter an ant hill the crocodile would pull another way thinking let me enter the water the bird would pull another way thinking let me fly up into the sky the dog would pull another way thinking let me enter a village the jackal would pull another way thinking let me enter a charnel ground the monkey would pull another way thinking let me enter a forest so this is the first part of the simile and uh, how it uh, begins there are bit more to complete the simile so this is this is all about the uh, non restraint and this tells so this shows how non restraint or when the six sense uh, bases are not disciplined or uh, the restraint is not practiced in terms of these six sense bases it is likened to these six different animals and a man uh, would catch these six animals and then uh, he would uh, tie these six animals using a strong rope and uh, then he would uh, knot or he would put a knot or he would attach them uh, to a single knot and then release so then what happens these six animals having uh, six different domains and feeding grounds and six different places that they want to go would pull Uh, into these six different uh, directions so these six animals are a snake a crocodile a bird a dog jackal and a mon- monkey so when they are released having tied into this uh, strong rope and into a, a single knot they would uh, try to uh, pull the rope to uh, different six directions and uh, thinking of going or reaching uh, where uh, that particular animal wants to go and then the second or the next part of that simile uh, now when these six animals become worn out and fatigued they would be dominated by the one among them that was strongest they would submit to it and come under its control so to because when the bhikkhu has not developed and cultivated mindfulness directed to the body the eye uh, pulls in the direction of agreeable forms and disagreeable forms are repulsive the ear pulls in the direction of agreeable sounds and disagreeable sounds are repulsive the nose pulls in the direction of agreeable odors and disagreeable odors are repulsive the tongue pulls in the direction of uh, agreeable tastes and disagreeable tastes are repulsive the body pulls in the direction of agreeable tactile objects and disagreeable tactile objects are repulsive the mind pulls in the direction of agreeable mental phenomena and disagreeable mental phenomena are repulsive it is in in it is in such a way that there are is non restraint so up to this point buddha is talking about or preaching about the non restraint and how would one practice non restraint and to make it clear to make it uh, more understandable buddha uses this nice and interesting simile of this six animals a scenario of a man uh, catching these six animals and Uh, tying them into um, a strong rope and then put them into a single knot attach them into uh, one knot and release in them then these six animals have in uh, six different uh, directions and have in six different feeding grounds and places that they want to go they would try to pull into these six um, uh, directions but when they are worn out when they are fatigued when they are exhausted Uh, the strongest one among these six can take the rest towards the direction that that particular animal wants to go so similarly buddha says when uh, these six sense bases so these six senses um eye ear nose tongue body and mind are not uh, disciplined or restrained 
they would try to go into its own direction. And having done that, when these six sense bases are exhausted, fatigued, and worn out, the strongest among these six sense bases can take the rest towards its own direction. The other rest or the other five uh, would go in the direction of the strongest uh, sense base. So that is what happened. Now, this uh, strongest sense base can be um, different depending on uh, different individuals. So this is the first part of the simile and also uh, the sutta Buddha uh, explains how the non-restraint is practiced or what happens when the non-restraint uh, is practiced or in other words, what happens when the um, restraint is not practiced or discipline is not practiced or uh, the six sense bases are not very well restrained or disciplined uh, by a bhikkhu. So, so this, this, this particular discourse is uh, delivered to a group of bhikkhus, addressing a group of bhikkhus. So they are, um, the teachings are meant for the bhikkhus particularly, but the same thing would happen to anybody uh, when the restraint is not practice or so when the six sense bases or six senses are not uh, properly disciplined or restrained. Okay, so before we go on to the uh, second half of half of the uh, sutta, let's see uh, whether anybody would like to say something or add something. Bhante, why are these particular animals used for these particular sensors? Uh, well, they, I don't think uh, there is a particular reason why these animals are used. So I can uh, think of the last one, actually. The, um, so if we compare or um, see what animals are used for what uh, sensors, uh, the snake is the first one. Snake is used for eye and crocodile is for ears, bird is for uh, uh, nose, and dog is for tongue, jackal is for uh, body, and monkey is for the mind. Apart from the first five, I can think of monkey, and uh, mind is in other places also likened to a monkey, uh, given the nature of the monkey and also the nature of the mind. It is called monkey mind because monkey is, you know, uh, does not stay, stay stand or does not uh, stand still at least for a moment. So is the mind. Mind is always going here and there, just like a monkey. Or even if monkey is staying in just, you know, one place, he's uh, looking different um, uh, directions and moving his uh, hand, legs, and head, and all these things. So it is likened to uh, mind given the uh, nature of the mind and also the monkey. So I don't, I, I don't know why other um, uh, five animals are used for this particular, uh, for these uh, five senses. Maybe uh, due to their uh, nature, there must be some uh, similarities of the nature of these animals and of these uh, six sense bases or five, six, five sense bases. So monkey is used in other places as well for mind, given its nature. Thank you, Bhante. So, so Bhante, if you see something 
or you taste something which is pleasurable, yeah. um, you can't restrain yourself from feeling the, the pleasure of it immediately. Is it, is it you must restrain yourself from uh, chasing after it kind of, um, because you can't, uh, you already felt it, right? Yeah. At the beginning. So when he's, when when what does it mean to restrain? Is it to not to carry on chasing after it? Yes, not to carry on chase, chasing after it, and also uh, as it mentions here, uh, mainly these two things: either um, uh, creating uh, uh, clinging towards that form that you just saw, or uh, generating aversion. If it is a likable one, normally we would create uh, likeness or agreeable uh, thoughts or, or some clinging or attachment towards the thing that we have just seen. Or if it is a, a disagreeable one, displeasing one, uh, we would create anger or aversion towards it. So mainly not to create these two uh, kinds of uh, thoughts having seen something or having heard or tasted something is called the restraint. And plus, as you say, you can uh, take case in uh, as well, but mainly uh, you are supposed to uh, uh, not to uh, generate um, attachment or aversion towards the object that you see, hear, taste, touch, or think. Okay, so, so in the first instance, you can't help it because of your past experience, you see it as pleasurable or is it, is it a case of recognizing when your mind has seen the object as a bad thing or a, a good thing, rather than um, just carrying on thinking about, without thinking, just... Um, just allowing the mind to sample it without thinking, is it to recognize immediately that this thing is pleasurable or this thing is, is uh, recognizing that your mind has, has gone into a, into the, into the pleasure mode or a repulsive mode. Is, is that, is that what you need to do? Yes. So th this, this thing is, this thing is happening actually immediately. Now, when you see something, immediately uh, your mind also starts to work. So even though we feel like uh, there are some sort of uh, 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 some some sort of uh, uh, distance or, or some duration that between the uh, seeing and also uh, your mind activating, so these things uh, are happening immediately. So. Yes, you can take, uh, you can, you can stop thinking afterwards as well. Like uh, when you have seen something, you should not be uh, thinking of it after you have seen it as well. But immediately when you see something, when you hear something, when your mind recognizes it, then as simultaneously your mind starts to generate either um, uh, attachment or aversion. So it happens immediately when, when simultaneously when you see something, hear something, or taste something. So that you should stop. I mean, uh, according to the sutta, you should stop uh, generating aversion or um, attachment. Um, and afterwards, yeah. also you should do the do, do that the same thing. Having seen something, you should not uh, uh, afterward. Uh, create or generate uh, aversion or attachment, but immediately as well, you, you should uh, not create uh, aversion or uh, attachment. Bhante, what the snake you referred to as what? The snake. Well, here, here in this uh, uh, simile, snake is used for uh, eye. eye, the eye, eye sense or the sense organ of seeing, eye. How, how is that now? 
well we can't see uh, exact similarity so some sort of uh, any any now just like as i mentioned just like the monkey and mind monkey, monkey mind, mind is yes. always uh, go together yeah. don't they because uh, right. uh, this 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 uh, very simile has been used in other places as well by the buddha uh, like in uh, monkey to mind or uh, other way around or vice versa mind to monkey given their nature Uh, i don't know whether uh, uh, snake and crocodile and bird or uh, those uh, particular animals have been the used as similes so for these senses Ante, I, the yes snake is so creepy could it be something like that that feelings of that say a sort a creepy creature uh, it could be it could be but uh, we can't uh, uh, actually compare these uh, uh, animals to these senses but uh, the main theme and main point here is something else it it is that going these six directions so that is the main theme and main point here because yes. these six animals are well if you uh, look at these six animals they uh, are from uh, six different families different, and six yes. different types and these six animals have six different a uh, feeding ground uh, grounds and domains yes How, yes right if you take snake snake lives in a uh, different place to other animals and mm-hmm. crocodile in a different place and eat and its foods and all these things are different and bird is you know uh, different to others so in that sense that is the main theme here so yes, right. i think for that purpose Uh, these six animals must have been used or uh, uh, mm. taken as similes to give you uh, uh, or to show us that uh, these six sense organs go in six different directions they have six yes. different uh, 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 feeding grounds and uh, domains yes 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 that is ante yes yeah. ante me i wanted to ask what about the squirrel the squirrel i mean is a symbol of uh, action for danger i heard in one of the uh, dharma talks the okay. squirrel squirrel yeah mhm it's a symbol of danger yeah symbol of danger okay yeah so maybe because squ- squirrel is uh, innocent is it is it the reason maybe yeah because the squirrel gave somebody a symbol of action that uh, going to uh, harm the person uh, that is a snake who want uh, who will in a few minutes come and uh, uh, i mean uh, stung the person but the squirrel gave the um, the, per- the the person the symbol that there is a snake before hand for you to uh, be stung by a snake and you will fall into a danger Mm-hmm. Okay so yeah this uh you you can use uh, uh these different animals in uh, in uh, in different context if you uh, use them as similes or examples uh you can use them in a different context so here in this context could actually show in that uh the action of these animals and how they behave that uh, they go in these various so this uh, six different directions and uh, trying to do that when they are uh, attached or tied together into the same knot what happens is the result will be um, uh, tiredness only because when uh, six uh, animals are pulling towards six directions uh, no one can uh, be succeed or it it can create 
uh, very hard uh, situation and as a result everyone can get tired or exhausted so similarly uh, when our six uh, sense bases are not restrained uh, because all these uh, uh, all each each of this uh, sense base has its own uh, feeding ground and domain each one wants to uh, go its own direction so as a result what happens is that this uh, exhaustion or this uh, tiredness uh, will be the result one day yeah uh, this example this simile uh, of uh, six different kinds of animals um, to me it doesn't bear um, uh, in, in, a, in a real life scenario say for instance if you take a big cook um, who is not restrained in uh, say uh, I uh, if he if he had developed a, a particular say taste he will go uh, you know hell bent hell bent on that uh, you know he wouldn't have necessarily uh, an eyes uh, sense you know like any other person you know looking at beautiful uh, people and you know women particularly um, um, so this simile doesn't bear uh um is to me it doesn't look it doesn't sounds like a, 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 a very good example of a simile in a real life scenario if you take a big or a person like you know a hum, normal human being he, he may have he may pr- probably possess uh possesses you know different uh, say uh, eye sense uh, uncontrolled, ear sense uncontrolled, uh, and so on and so forth. But he may, he may have developed a strong um, a sense uh, with his tongue. So that doesn't necessarily mean, uh, you know, he, he, will, he will be pulled in the other directions, or oh, why not, you know, uh, go and, you know, um, Um, you know, look at something better. If he's hell-bent on that, that's it. So this simile doesn't seem to be the, the best simile as far as I can see to explain this point. I can see, I know what, uh, what the Buddha... Uh, so, um, to me, I'm trying to you know, compare this to... Um, real life scenario a person having a very strong attachment for particular thing yeah uh, so i think uh, when 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 we uh, uh, when we look at the uh, other part of the simile also we might be able to you know uh, figure out or we might be able to understand what uh, the real point is because we have only gone uh, halfway through uh, there's another part of this simile as well So um, let's let's go to the other part of the simile and other part of the sutta and see what it tells or what Buddha um, teaches more uh, in this uh, sutta about uh, restraining. Uh, yes, okay, Dil, uh, before we go on to the next part, you can... No, no, Bante, I think looking at this, this is just using... to say that there are six directions. A snake goes on the ground, the crocodile is in the water and the ground, the bird flies in the yard, the dog goes to the village, the jackal goes to the forest, and the monkey flits from place to place on tree tops. I think they're just taken to show the directions that people are moving because when it, the late, second part of it, it, what it is showing is that here, because the people are all tied with so, strong ropes to each other. They just run all over the place and they all get tired out and there is no direction and focus. In this sutta, what they are really concentrating on Bhante is that for a monk who wants to get liberation of the mind with knowledge and with wisdom, and how you can stop getting reborn. 
So the purpose of this is say, what is saying is these animals will pull to different to the yard, to the water, to the village, to the forest, different directions. And therefore, because they are tied with a strong rope, they the they, they will whoever is stronger will drag till everybody is fatigued. Then there is no direction, there is no goal they go to. However, if a monk does uh, kind of asana and, and you know all the different ways of doing kind of asana and it's, uh, he, he managed to uh, have mindfulness of the body, then you find that and you're like these animals who are tied uh, with a strong rope to one very strong pillar, you're grounded and you're based in that and therefore you can't just run away to this direction to the water or to the treetops or wherever it is, you're grounded there and then you can work on with uh, effort and you can with mindfulness of the body, whether you do anapanasati or whether you do uh, uh, sampajan or any one of the other, the dhatu manasikara, whatever it is, you can get concentrated and you will be able to then work and get away for liberation and there won't be any remainder. I think that's what he's trying to say. About yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, that's but, yeah, that's correct. But, so but, here, the, but, the main but, point is these uh, six different uh, domains and six yeah. directions. And uh, but, okay, before I go to but, the I, part of the sutra, can I, yes, can I say, yeah, yeah. One day here, now we we are our five, our six senses, six different objects: the eyes to wish to objects, the ear to sounds, various things. And our attention goes to the object that creates the most amount of the one we like most or the one we dislike most. So this is the simile of the six animals where the strong animal pulls the rest of them and go because, because our senses only one can work at any one moment. So whatever creates the most amount of either defilement or the most amount of... Uh, the pleasure or displeasure will take the upper hand. So all the other senses, the other five senses will be uh, not working when the yeah. sixth sense is working. So, so this is the simile of the six animals tied together. The strongest will pull. So whatever creates the most amount of uh, aversion or most amount of pleasure, uh, whether it is from the eyes or the nose or the ears or the tongue or the body or the mind, that will take preference and it will pull the rest of the uh, these things together. Yeah. That is the that is the simile, that is the purpose of this simile in the sutra. I agree with that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Sumana, okay. I agree with that. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sumana. And before, uh, just before I go, uh, I think Roshant wanted to say something. If you still want to uh, speak. Okay, let's mm. see. Maybe he will. Uh, One day. Yeah. One day, I yes. did mention about the squirrel. After the squirrel gave the hint to the person and uh, there a snake followed him and had he not given the hint the, to the person, uh, that uh, person wouldn't have got up from there and ran for his life. Okay. So it, it, it may be in a, in a, a story, isn't it? This squirrel. Okay, so um, let's go to the next part of the sutta and also we will find the uh, other part of the uh, next half of the simile as well. And at the end, let's see how uh, Buddha uh, teaches this lesson to this uh, group of bhikkhus. So the first part told us that um, uh, how non-restraint is like uh, using the simile of these six animals uh, who are tied to a strong rope and then tied to the same knot who are trying to pull in uh, six uh, different directions. And um, the next part of the simile and next part of the sutta as well goes like this. And how because is their restraint? Here, having seen, having seen a form with the eye, a bhikkhu is not intent upon a pleasing form and not repelled by a displeasing form. 
he dwells having set uh, he dwells having set up mindfulness of the body with the measureless uh, mind and he understands as it really is that liberation of mind liberation by wisdom wherein those evil unwholesome states cease without remained and this is the next part of the sutta and next part of the uh, simile will come next so buddha says uh, what is restraint how restraint works or how one would practice restraint taking a big word again buddha says having seen having seen a form with the eye this bhikkhu is not intent upon a pleasing form if the form was pleasing one he would not intent upon uh, this pleasing form and also he would not repelled uh, by a displeasing form so having seen a form if it is a likable agreeable one this bhikkhu does not create or generate any uh, attachment any clinging towards this uh, agreeable or likable form and uh, neither he does uh, create aversion if the form if what he has seen is displeasing or disagreeable unpleasant uh, thing so even though he sees something it does not uh, cause uh, attachment or aversion so this is buddha says uh, how the restraint is and also further he dwells having set up mindfulness of the body with measureless mind and he understands as it really is that liberation of mind liberation by wisdom so that is very important he understands as it really is so he sees the uh, true nature of that thing that he has just seen so because of that as a result of that he understands it as really it is he does not create any anger uh, no any aversion no any um, attachment no any pleasure uh, because of the form that he has seen and further he would uh, set up mindfulness of the body and also understands as it really is and he practices these two things the one is liberation of mind cheto vimukti which appears again and again in uh, uh, almost every sutta and also liberation by wisdom panya vimukti as we have already discussed and number of uh, occasions in number of uh, our lessons liberation of mind is cheto mukti uh, another term for uh, concentration and liberation by wisdom uh, panya mukti another term for insight so he would practice these two liberation of mind and liberation by wisdom wherein those evil unwholesome states what happens will cease without remained so this is what happens this is how uh, a bhikkhu would restrain his uh, eye and so he does uh, in terms of other the rest five sense organs sense bases uh, having um, heard something with ear having um, tasted something with tongue having smelled something uh, with his uh, nose and having cognized a mental phenomenon a thought with his mind he would not create or generate uh, attachment no uh, aversion towards this uh, object be it mental physical or smell taste or touch whatever it is and further he would uh, set up mindfulness of the body and also he would understand as it really is the true nature of that thing and also he would uh, practice uh, liberation by mind and also liberation by wisdom we are in as a result of this uh, this uh, evil unwholesome states will cease without remained completely and perfectly it is in such way buddha says that there are is restraint or this is how restraint is practiced uh, by a bhikkhu that is not 
creating, not uh, letting uh, uh, attachment or aversion to come up or uh, arouse in the mind uh, as a result of seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, or thinking. And also understanding uh, the things as they really are. And also practice of liberation by wisdom and also uh, practice of liberation by uh, mind. And as a result, he would uh, eradicate or he, will, he would seize all unwholesome evil thoughts from arising and also without remained, without remaining anything. And now we come to the uh, second part of the uh, simile, how restraint is shown or explained or described using this simile. Suppose Bhikkhu, a man would catch six animals again the same uh, as in the previous occasion with, uh, with different domains and different feeding grounds and tie them by a strong rope. He would catch again snake, a crocodile, a bird, a dog, a jackal, and a monkey and tie each by strong rope. Having done so, he would bind them to a strong post or pillar. Now this time, what is the uh, difference between the uh, first part and the second part of the simile is that first time they were tied to the same knot. And this time they are tied to uh, a strong post or a pillar. Then those six animals with six different domains and different feeding grounds would each pull in the direction of its own feeding ground and domain. The snake would pull one way thinking, uh, let me enter anthill, so and so forth as above. Uh, the monkey would pull another way, finally thinking, let me enter forest. And having done so, what happens? Now, when these six animals become worn out and fatigued, they would stand close to that post or pillar they would sit down there. They would lie down there. So too, because when a bhikkhu has developed and cultivated mindfulness directed to the body, the eye does not pull in the direction of agreeable forms, nor are disagreeable forms repulsive. The ear does not pull in the direction of agreeable sounds, nor are disagreeable sounds repulsive. The nose does not pull in the direction of agreeable odors, nor are disagreeable orders repulsive. The tongue does not pull in the direction of agreeable tastes, nor are disagreeable tastes repulsive. The body does not pull in the direction of agreeable tactile objects, nor are disagreeable tactile objects repulsive. Mm -hmm. The mind does not pull in the direction of agreeable mental phenomena, nor are disagreeable mental phenomena repulsive. Now, this time, the uh, uh, what uh, uh, is different to the first scenario, the first simile, the first part. Uh, this time, uh, if we take the simile itself, it says that this time these six different animals who have six different domains and feeding grounds and wanting to go in six different uh, directions to six, six different places, destinations, are tied into a strong uh, um, a pillar or a pole or a post. So uh, even though they drag or they pull in these six different directions, uh, they can't move. And when they uh, are fatigued and uh, worn out and exhausted by doing that, uh, the strongest cannot take the rest towards the direction that uh, uh, that animal wants because they are all they are all tied into a strong pillar or a post so everybody has to uh, stay around uh, or in the in the um, area that uh, around that post or the pillar so they would either sit or lie down nothing else they can do they can't take or anybody uh, cannot take the rest towards the direction uh, that particular animal wants so similarly buddha says when a bhikkhu uh, restrains his uh, six sense uh, bases, so these six senses, mm. um, when he uh, restrains them, um, he can uh, have the control over these six sense bases. And as a result of that, 
even though he sees something whether it is agreeable likable or disagreeable or displeasing he would not create or generate uh, likeness or, or, or clinging or attachment towards that form no he would create um, uh, aversion or uh, displeasing thoughts towards that uh, form if it is displeasing so uh, similarly he would do with regards to the uh, other five sense organs because he even though he sees tastes hears uh, smells or, or things mm. he has control he can see the uh, true nature of things as uh, they really are and also he practices these two um, uh, liberations liberation by mind or liberation by wisdom as a result of that he would be able to seize all unwholesome evil thoughts uh, without remaining without a remained so that is buddha says it is in such way that they are is restrained so this is how uh, one would practice restraint and this is how restraint is like and this is how one uh, has to practice restraint with regards to these six sense bases or six sense faculties and buddha says finally a strong post or pillar this bhikkhus is a designation for mindfulness directed to the body mm-hmm. therefore bhikkhus you should train yourself thus we will develop and cultivate mindfulness directed to the body make it our vehicle make it our basis stabilize it exercise ourselves in it and fully perfect it mm-hmm. thus should you train yourself mm-hmm. so this is uh, how buddha concludes his uh, uh, discourse uh, showing them uh, how to practice restraint and uh, what would happen when somebody does not practice restraint and how uh, the non restraint is like and how the restraint is like using this uh, simile of these six uh, different animals so and then finally he uh, mentions and emphasizes that uh, the way to do this is the practice of uh, the mindfulness directed to the body so that is your vehicle that is your uh, basis so uh, that is the way that you can practice restraint in terms of your six sense bases or six sense faculties so make it your vehicle make it your way make it your path and by that you can achieve your goal so that is what buddha says finally by ending this uh, discourse kaya gata sati mindfulness directed towards your body that is uh, the lesson buddha teaches uh, in this sutta uh, to this group of bhikkhus and uh, okay let's see now if, uh, whether we have uh, more questions and more uh, comments Uh, at the end of the uh, reading of the sutta and we can continue our discussion from this point onwards bante uh, can i ask you to repeat the last pali sentence okay sure what is the last pali sentence you mentioned once yes, yes. I, I i i i mentioned uh, the pali term for uh, the mindfulness directed towards body kaya gata sati kaya gata sati is the pali term pali phrase for the uh, mindfulness directed towards body so that is the actually the main teaching main dharma that buddha teaches here in this discourse by using this uh, simile this story and all these things uh, he encourages teaches and instructs uh, bhikkhus to use or, and also develop and practice kaya gata sati um Uh, the mindfulness directed towards body thank you that bhai. is the way buddha as buddha shows uh, for the restraint of six sense bases or six faculties bante he bante, says bante. that uh okay i will first go to uh, hemamali and then we'll come to lux okay 
Bante, is it is it a kayanu bata sati? Is it similar to uh kayanu pasana vedana? Kayanu pasana. It is similar to kayanu pasana. Okay. So the Buddha says kayanu uh pasana vedana is better, is it? Or kayanu pasana and vedana, why vedana? Kayanu pasana. Ah kayanu pasana, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is um uh, uh, to the start, Kaya Nupasana is uh, better than uh, Chitta Nupasana or something like that? No. Uh, well, we can't say that. Uh, that okay. We can't say that one is better than the other. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, well, it, uh, we could say like this. Uh, it, it depends on different uh, individuals. Maybe All someone right, okay. would find uh, one uh, easier than the other, uh, starting with one and then moving to the other. But we can't say one is better than the other. Okay. Well, you could say okay. that it, depending it on, on different individual. individuals. Individual. For, okay. for different you, individuals Vante. to practice and start with. Yeah, thank you, Bante. Yeah. Yes, Lux. Yes, Bante. Uh, he, uh, the, the text says he dwells having set up mindfulness of the body with a measureless mind. What does this, what does a measureless mind mean? Uh, yes, the measureless mind is. Uh... Man? Start video. Eka kosa katima. Come on, Nadu. That means they can't see you. Huh? They can't see you. Make start video. Yeah, this is uh, Michelle's mind means Could it be a different, difficult to translate thing from Pali? Yeah, that is what actually I'm uh, looking for the exact uh, Pali term for that. Can it, uh, Bhante, can it be Mahagata Chitta? Uh, let me double check it uh, from the is it the upper man? Upper man, yes. Yeah. yeah, while I uh, look for the uh, term, uh, if anybody would want to ask any other question, please uh, do so. Mante? Yeah. Um, uh, I could, at the beginning, I couldn't get the meaning of the title of the sutta, Chappana Koppama, Chai Six, and then Panaka means what? Living beings. Panaka, yeah, living beings, living creatures. Living beings. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Bante, can I ask you something, Bante, please? Yeah, yeah. Right. So, Bante, like you mentioned that Cheto Vimitti and Panya Vimitti, so by liberating the mind like this, using this, uh, the, you can get liberated. And, in, and I think in the same way, using here, uh, Tanna and Vibhava Tanna, isn't it? That you don't want to uh, get attracted to the things which are favorable. So I won't go to the favorable thing or any other senses. And at the same time, when you see something repulsive, Vibhava Tanna, that you are not, that you stay away from that. Then your mind is very grounded. So you, you use the Tanna and Vibhava Tanna as the two things that would distract you from your liberation. Would that be, would that be right, Pante? Uh, well, in this case, I think uh, particularly uh, uh, 
it is uh, referring to um, uh, liking, attachment, and aversion. Yes. So uh, it it refers to uh, the thoughts uh, relevant to aversion. That means the thoughts like hatred, anger. So vipava tanha, I think, uh, is uh, more than it's it's wider than this uh, hatred, isn't it? Yeah, it's about becoming. It's yeah. About so this is this is just the version, the only the particular part. Thank yeah, only you, the particular. Yes, yeah. only the version. Thank, yeah. thank you, Ban. Yeah, I've uh, found this uh, Pali term for uh, measureless and uh, uh, limited mind. It is appamana cheto. That means uh, 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 this measureless mind and uh, uh, what is the opposite of it is uh, and this is limited mind. Yeah. Measureless mind and limited mind. Appamana cheto, appamana. That means I think uh, as a result of, you know, uh, uh, practice of these two, uh, uh, the liberation of uh, the mind and liberation of uh, by wisdom. That means uh, in other terms, uh, concentration and wisdom. As a result of that, uh, your mind uh, would be either uh, limited or limitless. Now, uh, your mind is limited when your mind is deluded, when you do not practice these two, uh, either concentration or uh, wisdom. So your mind is limit limited because your mind is uh, deluded with so many things. And when you practice these two, uh, uh, your mind is limitless in the sense of, uh, you know, uh, wholesome thoughts. Now, for example, if you take, uh, let's take metta, so when you practice mekta, you spread it into, you know, uh, without a limitation, without any, uh, any measures, any, any limits. So in that sense, your mind is limitless, uh, wide open in the, in the good side. So that is okay. what uh, uh, is uh, said by uh, uh, limit and limitless here. Okay, so... So if you're walking in the park and you see somebody eating an ice cream, you see yeah. the ice cream, it, it looks good, it smells good, and you're like focused on how good it is. And so your mind kind of is just focused on that. And you're not, not you, 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 you dragged all of the, you, you um, all the other senses have, have gone down in focus you're focused on that so you're kind of limiting your mind just to that train of thought is that yes yes yeah yeah is that more like uh, yeah yeah you are limiting to uh, that particular thought in that in that case yeah you can understand it that way as well and uh, when your mind is freed your mind is limitless so there's no uh, limit uh, well it is limitless in the sense that your mind is uh, wide open you can see the reality yeah you can see all the e numbers in the colorings of yes the, of yes the, yeah of, of... yeah if it is just only ice cream that you want to speak yeah you can see all the e numbers and all yes. uh, uh, the 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 con the what you call the consequences <laughs> diabetes and all these things yes that's right in ice cream <laughs> Right, and also I would like to mention uh, two more things here. Well, uh, when uh, practicing this uh, restraint, um, uh, well, as we know, as we saw from the sutta, this is uh, meant, this teaching is meant for the bhikkhus particularly, and uh, it can be, you know, uh, practiced by anybody, regardless of being ordained or non-ordained, uh, to certain limits, there will be certain limits. And, um, uh, uh, I would like to point uh, out uh, one uh, teaching from the Satipatthana Sutta uh, uh, that is Ditte uh, Ditta uh, in Pali it says Ditte Ditta Mattang, Sutte Sutta Mattang that means seen is just seen. You see something, it is just it. Uh, that seen does not uh, give rise to any other thoughts as a result of that scene, be it uh, 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 
uh, liking or be it uh, clinging to attachment, like or uh, be it uh, dislike. Seen is just seen. Heard is just heard. So that is what Satipatthana Sutta teaches. So mentioned in the Satipatthana Sutta, Ditte Ditta Mattang, Sutte Sutta Mattang. So that is uh, the way in which you can restrain your um, six sense bases. And another important thing here is that Yoniso uh, Manasikara, that is the wise uh, attention, wise reflection, just like uh, 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 in the in the scenario, in the uh, simile that uh, Lux mentioned, if you can wisely reflect upon the uh, particular thing, the action or what you see or hear uh, or taste or whatever it is, that wise reflection, Yoniso Manasikara is also can be helpful here uh, in order to restrain your uh, uh, six faculties, six sense faculties. When you reflect wisely, then you can see the reality, things as they are. So these two things are also uh, contributing to the uh, restraint and also not restraint. When they are not practiced, uh, they uh, contribute to non-restraint, but when they are practiced, they uh, contribute to uh, restraint. And uh, another reason why I mentioned this is meant for the big course because there will be always limits and uh, the extent that other people can go for, for particularly in my opinion, I think wise reflection is more applicable for the lay people, uh, those who have, you know, live and lead ordinary lives, the lives which are full of other burdens and other you know commitments and other things which are busy so if you still you can um, uh, restrain your sense faculties uh, by using this second method which is the wise reflection just like in the story uh, that uh, lux related if you can see how harmful it could be and how um, bad it would be uh, for yourself for your health or things like that uh, that you understand by uh, reflect, reflecting uh, wisely, wise reflection, uh, so that can be uh, very much be uh, helpful for the uh, other people. Samantha, uh, uh, yes. you can speak now. Yeah, thank you, Bante. Um, I was just wondering, um, so with the, wi uh, the wise reflection, um, do you have the other one, you know, the one that goes with it, the clear comprehension, sampajana. So how would, the, uh, do we need to apply that here as well? And what does that exactly mean? What's the difference between that and Yonisa Manasikara? Uh, uh, sampajana, clear comprehension goes together with sati, mindfulness, normally. Uh, yeah. So sati and sampajana. So those are the two yeah. things which go together all the time. Sati, mm -hmm. mindfulness, and sampajanya, uh, the clear comprehension. So yeah. um, clear comprehension, as it is uh, described again in the Satipatthana Sutta, is to be uh, aware and mm -hmm. to have a clear comprehension, clear awareness of everything that you uh, may be doing. Mm -hmm. so, so it goes that? with together with uh, uh, mindfulness, sati, and sampajanya. So what's the there difference? Is, uh, wise, yeah, it, 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 it does contribute to wise reflection as well, because when you are aware of uh, everything that you are doing, it does contribute to uh, wise reflection as well. But normally, uh, clear comprehension goes together with mindfulness, sati and sampajanya. Yeah. So what's the difference between yeah, sati and sam, sati uh, and sampajanya? Because they all, uh, sati means your... Uh, mindful and Sampajan is also mindful. Yes, there is a similarity. There is a similarity, but uh, 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 Sampajan, clear comprehension, uh, uh, go, it is like uh, uh, awareness and knowledge mm. or the mindfulness and knowledge. You are mindful and uh, clear comprehension means you have the knowledge as well of that particular thing. Mm. So there is this uh, subtle difference between these two things. Mm. They are similar uh, yeah. by the, you know, uh, 
the outer look but uh, there are there is this subtle difference whereas this uh, sampajanya clear comprehension is uh, like knowledge whereas uh, sati mindfulness is like uh, uh, maybe understanding or awareness again yeah maybe a bit more in depth sort of thing yeah. isn't it yeah, yeah. okay Nancy, thank you can i just can i just add something yes please yeah sati by itself is no good without clear comprehension because okay. you have yeah. yes you have to be mind you can be mindful without knowing the reality seeing the reality you have to be mindful yeah. of uh, because even a cat who is waiting to pounce on a mouse is mindful but uh, you have to have clear comprehension you have to know exactly what you are mindful about see if you are uh, say doing walking meditation when you keep your left foot you have to be mindful that you are keeping the left foot and not the right foot hmm that's a that's a simplest of uh, example because if you are breathing in you have to know your breathing in and your mind should be with the breath hmm. not somewhere they also give a good example of a gatekeeper who is supposed to watch the people going in and out that gatekeeper allows only the known people to go in not the unknown so that means he has mindfulness and he has clear comprehension mm. so so the the clear comprehension would have a aim an objective sort of thing uh, objective uh, is to is to know exactly what is happening at that precise moment whether it's good or bad whether it's good or bad yes yeah and then the yonisi manasikara that's uh, yonisi manasikara is like a tool to know the right and the wrong because wrong. If you uh, think yeah. about it, every the, thought moment we have the manasikara. You know, manasikara can be either yoniso or ayoniso, and depending on that, uh, because right. it can't, it can't be, it can't be in the middle. It has to be either yoniso or, or ayoniso. Mm. So, depending on that, the uh, uh, action, mm. uh, wholesome or unwholesome. Yeah. So these yeah. things go together: mindfulness, clear comprehension, effort. Um, the heedfulness and yoniso manaskar ah right they okay. all yeah. they all work together right okay, okay. thank you thank okay. you thank you let's reflect thank you dr sumana bante ajan sumedo explains it because he says sati is as sumana said mindfulness you are aware of something so you so any you can be aware of doing a wrong thing like killing a person mindfully or but sampajanya is with wisdom it's knowing and it's intuitive it's something that you know things as they are so it is a much more deeper concept that used together so he always calls he calls it intuitive awareness to say that awareness is the mindfulness part sati sampajanya is more the the intuitive it's more knowing of the way things they are really are it's a knowing so it's a more thing and that's why they are used together and as i mentioned it's a much more broader thing because then you know things as they are yeah yeah thank you thank you bante bante can i can i can i can i um um ajan brown i okay i think that another way to sumana story yeah about the gatekeeper he said this gatekeeper was supposed to look after the house in the night and uh, in the night the burglars came so the gatekeeper said okay the burglars are coming they the burglars robbed the whole house and took and he noted it he noted okay the burglars are taking things away but he didn't have the wisdom to stop them or take any action so sati is uh, awareness but it should be always uh, be together with wisdom just like the gate picked up uh, noted everything the burglar is taking away the stuff but he didn't have the wisdom to stop them or take any action that's a story ajan sumedu ajan brahm mentioned okay thank you so that is also a good way to understand this to uh, things thank you ba bante this 
there is a that we have we we kind of have to give up something here right um, we can't um, we can't be as passionate as we would like to be you know we could get carried away into a beautiful story or a beautiful picture um, it's kind of um, i mean if you're a true buddhist you can't really be uh, like a can you be can I, I'm, i'm wondering whether a true buddhist can be a, a beautiful artist or you know carried away in, into music and to art um what do you think uh yeah so if you sort of um, yeah in 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 one way uh, i can say yes but in another way uh, i can say no because uh, uh, the thing is uh, uh in the ordinary uh, life you can uh, do those things right so you can do those things but if you sort of uh, commit yourself for the practice of the teaching you will have to give up or stop doing or engage or engaging in those kinds of things but apart from that uh, if you sort of uh, practice Uh, buddhist teachings while you lead your ordinary life you can do those things because uh, by doing those things you don't do any harm right so in that sense uh, you can do but if you sort of commit yourself completely towards the practices you voluntarily you yourself will uh, give up all these things because you will yourself understand that uh, by doing these things you sort of indulge yourself in a in a certain way and also you will uh, encourage and create uh, ways for other people also to indulge or do some things but apart from that if you don't go to that deep uh, practice uh, for other people i don't say that uh, even though you are a practice buddhist uh, practice buddhist or even though you are practicing buddhism uh, you can do those things i don't say that you can do those things but uh, there would be a, a time uh, that you would want to commit and dedicate your whole life completely 100% or 200% to the practices then you will uh, want to uh, uh, give up and stop or uh, abandon those things mante yeah uh even buddha used to uh appreciate nice sceneries and things like that so what uh, buddha says is uh as long as you can appreciate and as long as you do not get attached to things and uh, get yourself distracted or att- have attachment to these things you can appreciate so many things like arts or science or films and things like that or music and uh, so uh, even i think buddha uh, uh, listen to music but by listening to music only thing is you have to make sure that you are not attached to it you you don't really um, uh, get yourself um, uh, what do you call the, the get yourself into unwholesome acts yeah i do it carry the way yes that's yeah. right yeah so uh, so it's uh, there's no problem in uh, appreciating uh, artwork or doing some uh, good work even buddhist uh, temples in sri lanka uh, there are so many even some buddhist monks actually do do sculptures and uh, one of the famous uh, sculptures were actually buddhist monks yeah that's and, that's yeah. quite correct so yeah. but there were there were uh, occasions yeah. that would happen to uh, listen yeah. to the music for 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 various reasons not to yeah. enjoy it because yeah, yeah. sometimes some people came before him came to him and uh, uh, showed their talents and things like that yes but they did appreciate uh, beauty he did appreciate uh, uh, the the beauty of the nature and all these things because he is enlightened he has no attachment 
uh, whatsoever so he and also other uh, enlightened beings also could uh, appreciate the beauties and all these things yeah those 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 people did it and they were not against it uh, as you mentioned m- mentioned uh, as long as you are not carried away uh, by it you, you can uh, appreciate it yes so but, but the, yeah, what about what's that bikus who compose songs music they do that sort of things don't they no, they to, yeah they today we music they they are yeah, songs today, songs yeah today music, they do, well so. they don't compose songs but they can write the, yeah, the words but <laughs> they don't compose in, yeah according but, but, to the um, uh, well it many many things are happening today nowadays yeah. but we don't know uh, whether they uh, everything uh, is uh, in accordance with the uh, uh, because we know all things like that but you know as the time goes on certain things change in certain ways so you can't uh, expect uh, the things to be in the exact way that they were in the at the buddha's time so there are uh, as the Uh, uh time goes on as the uh, the the um, the world changes and the uh, societies change and new things come into the world uh, certain things change uh the, therefore different things happen we can't say that these things are exactly right and also exactly wrong, wrong yes. uh, for example if we take uh, this uh, uh, most famous monk who was as uh, mr dharma sir mentioned was a, a famous sculptor who created lots and lots of uh, buddha statues so you can't blame him saying that he is doing something which is against the law it could be so but he is uh, in, in on the other hand he is doing something uh, which which goes uh, with the dharma at least creating buddha statues which can you know um, Uh, which can uh, be objects of worships and also which can be uh, the objects for other people to have their uh, at least buddha anusati or the devotion or, or, or faith in the buddha so there are certain things happen so you can't um, sort of compare uh, things and expect things to be exactly according to the uh, buddha's words so as the uh, time changes as the uh, world changes certain certain things uh, change as well uh, but but bante these these words we're using like appreciation beauty soothing music there's always this element of attachment to that you know it, it's this music soothing that sound is horrible so there is that attachment i guess at the buddha's level there isn't such a thing if 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 the buddha here is a a beautiful flute playing on the one hand on the on the other side if he hears somebody swearing at him both of these things have have make no make no effect on his mind right so yeah. at, at 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 his level at at the nirvana level maybe the you know i it's difficult to understand what the appreciation is i guess yeah correct yes 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 we can't we can't actually expect uh, uh the this, this the same thing done by the buddha or any other enlightened being from an ordinary person yeah you are quite correct if an ordinary person sort of listen to music or see some uh, good scenery or enjoy some uh, painting or something for that ordinary being always there can be some element of attachment to it but for a, a, a enlightened being uh, given the uh, uh, for the reason that that person is fully enlightened and given up all uh, uh, unwholesome thoughts and attachment and all these things so the the level is completely different that is correct so it is now you know this this nice simile again buddha has used so if your hand is sort of uh, not broken or not wounded you don't have to be afraid of taking a poison into your hand right so it is just like a, a, like an enlightened being seeing um 
a beautiful uh, scenery or listen to uh, nice music because their mind is fully protected but if your hand is not uh, healthy if it is broken you are always vulnerable and you are always open to uh, you can't take the poison now it's like you know if you are in the full ppe if it is nowadays you can go to the uh, ward where the patients corona or whoever is uh, is been treated but if you don't have the ppe you are still uh, open for the uh, you are still vulnerable so in the case of these enlightened beings they have this ppe so they are there's no harm whatever they touch whatever they see whatever they hear but in the case of us we don't have that ppe yet so we have this risk at least uh, a minimum uh, yeah that's that's true but uh, my understanding is that uh, we can appreciate and see things as they are but we shouldn't go to grasp upadan uh, no. grasp yes. upadan eh? yeah. and we shouldn't uh upadan yeah. yeah yeah that is correct yeah that yeah. is correct so if you are able to do that that's completely yeah. fine that's completely yeah. fine yeah so yeah, that in, that depends on your ability actually yeah. maybe everybody cannot do that uh, if you can do that that's completely fine so in other words you can see a film but don't bring the film to your home you see it enjoy it and leave it there and come back yeah right? yeah it's something so like that yes something like that yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's why the buddha like to stay in visala and you know uh, with anatta pindika we do beautiful places and then that last walk back he look back at all these beautiful places but he was never having thanna upadana no he yes. said this is very beautiful he always commented anand this is so beautiful yeah, yeah. but that uh, thanna upadana was in there so he could eat yeah. the but if we eat an ice cream or chocolate or something we have some attack attack yeah. to it. we can't just yeah. say the food is lovely yeah. and just because we are still protagonist yes yeah that's correct okay so let's uh, conclude today's our uh, discussion and uh, i would like to thank you all for joining today and listening and for your all contributions and questions and uh, hope to see you again next week at the same time and until then stay safe i wish you all may you all be well happy and peaceful teruan sarna teruan sarna thank you bante Thank you. Thank you, Bante. Thank you. Thank you, Bante. Thank you.